Well, today we have a Pioneer SX 737. This is the 737 that I did the LED, um, diffused LED versus traditional LED uh, video on. And what I'm going to do with this today is, uh, first I'm going to remove all of these knobs. Now here's the tool that I like to use. Right? Somebody asked me, they were having a hard time getting one of the knobs off of uh, their receiver. And I bought these a long time ago for like star car stereo installations. Or installations. Um, so you just kind of use this to pry. Well, that's really not a good angle, but... Right, just a little pry, pry tool. Like, pry it right off. Right, right off. You know, if you don't have one of these, you can also, um, if you take a couple of spoons, take a couple of spoons, you can put them underneath and then just kind of wrench it that way. So you put it underneath the uh, the knob and then just kind of turn it. And you can wrench that off. But what we're going to do today on this one is I am going to clean the pots and show you how that is done on this particular receiver. So the, the, the process is going to be similar on other receivers, right? So take all the knobs off, you have a, a, a nut there, you have a nut there, you have two screws on top. And usually I don't, because I've had the faceplate off of this, I usually don't put them on very tight. You want to be careful that you don't mar the face when you're taking these off. Take those two off. And then I do have the two screws that I will quickly remove here. And I don't believe there's one there are any on the bottom, but there may be, because I have the bottom off of this already. So uh, looks like there are not any. So pop this off. Now, here's where you have to be careful when you take this faceplate off and you're working underneath. Because you have that dial pointer, the dial string, you don't want to right dial pointer is about here. Right? You don't want to break that as you're going through and, and cleaning these controls. There are additional screws. So here we have a selector, we have volume, and then we have some other stuff and tone control and right, tone control. So there are some additional screws. Sometimes there are bolts. I think these are just screwed in. So let's start with the tone control. And this may morph into kind of a preventive maintenance type video on these receivers. Because once I pull this out, I want to show you a couple things that you want to consider addressing. Um, two things. I think this plate comes off too. Oh, somebody just fired up a lawnmower and they have to go close my garage door. It's a beautiful day today. So bass and treble controls. I may have to. Here we go. All right. So on these receivers, 
cleaning the controls, right, remove them. Um, I'm gonna spray some deoxid in there. Now, these do have some transistors that should be replaced in terms of preventive maintenance tasks. So, um, maybe that's what I'll do with this video instead. Instead of me doing control cleaning, I'm gonna go board at a time, replace what should be replaced, talk about what those replacements should be. So, um, but I'll do all of that in this video. So, there are, there's a list of, uh, of bad known uh, transistors, right, on Audio Karma. And if you look at, if you look at these transistors here, let's see if I can zoom in on one, I might not be able to. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to get it. Nope, without moving this thing all over. So we have uh, 2SA726s and 2SC1344s. If you look at the legs on these transistors, they're black, right? So that's kind of a, a, a giveaway that these are some of the bad transistors that should be replaced. Um, also, not present on this board, but if you see any light blue Sanyo caps, you want to replace those. I think these orange ones are okay. The blue tantalum caps, um, those are a good idea to replace those. I don't know what value those are, so I don't know if I'll be replacing those today or not. But at a minimum on this, what I'm going to do is replace the bad transistors and then clean the pots. Um, now, I could certainly recap this entire board. And the 737 is kind of on the on the cusp, right, or on the kind of the edge of, uh, of the value of a receiver that you might want to go in and completely recap. Um, just, you know, because you might get your money back on this if you're going to resell it. Naturally, if this is yours, do whatever you want to do, but this is for one of the shops. So we get into financially, you know, from a, from a resale perspective, uh, do you recap the entire thing when you don't necessarily have to? I mean, there's an argument to be made that these are 50-year-old or more than 50-year-old caps. They should be replaced. But I've pulled these caps before, or pulled caps before that have been absolutely fine. So, and if you're, if I'm going to pull them to test them, I might as well replace them. So, at a minimum, and this is what this video is going to be, at a minimum, you want to replace the bad known transistors, right? And then any capacitors that are known to be bad. So, I'm going to do that now. Um, I'm going to have to look at my transistor substitution sheet and let you know what I'm replacing these with. So, let me step away and do that, and uh, I will come right back. All right, so the 2SA-726s are going to be replaced with KSA-992s and the 2SC-1344s are going to be replaced with KSC-1845s. Um, I haven't pulled down the service manual yet to look at the tantalum caps. I'll do that after I replace these transistors. But And I have, uh, I've gone one pass on the um, the potentiometers here with the WD-40 contact cleaner and then I'll treat with um, with some fader lube. So let me jump into uh, recapping, or not recapping, replacing those transistors. All right, so after I do a board, I always test it and make sure that it's good. So this, uh, not recap, but this retransistorization, <laughs> uh, replacing the transistors was successful. Um, those blue caps were 2.2 microfarad 25. I didn't have any film caps, which is what I normally like to use in place of those tantalums, but I did have some electrolytics, so pop those in there. 
and they were fine. I hit the controls again with uh, some cleaner and I'm gonna call this board done. So preventive maintenance has been performed on the tone control board on come on, the Pioneer SX737. So in all, and I'm gonna show you these transistors and uh, the two caps here in a second once I get this last screw in. Right, so did the two, the two blue caps, right, two blue caps. And as I was saying, if you look at these transistors, see the black legs? Right, it's an easy way to identify um, potential bad transistors that you should look at replacing. So, um, that's it for the tone control board. Again, this series is going to be kind of preventive maintenance steps on a Pioneer SX737 or really any of the 3 series, except for maybe the 1010. I haven't worked on one of those, but I've worked on 838s, 939s, a couple 939s, seven, several 737s, 535s, 636s, so, and it's kind of all the same thing. So as always, if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe. Catch you in the next one. I think we're going to move to the next board here because this is where I have most of my issue in terms of it being crackling. And we'll look at this board in the next segment. So stay tuned.